Okay. Oh, <laughs> so, hey, everyone. Um, I want to welcome y'all to our second Embracing Your Natural Hair discussion, um, where we talk about self-care, hair care, and overall empowerment for women. Um, so if y'all have any natural hair questions during our discussion, um, you can feel free to put it in the chat and we'll um, end the discussion and we will answer your questions. Um, so first, we're going to start by everyone introducing themselves and telling us where you're from and how long you've been natural. So whoever wants to go first. All right, All right. I'll start. Um, my name is Shannara Taylor. I was born in Florida. And I've been natural. I've been in high school, but I transitioned to getting locks also in high school. I was a sophomore and I've been locked for four years now. Go ahead, Tari. Okay. Whoever wants to go next. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Um, I've been natural for five years. My name is Tyrese, if I didn't say that. And I am from Florida. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, well, Gabby. Guess, Yeah, Gabby, you can go. <laughs> There's noise in the background, so. It's... Your hair looks so pretty. Okay, so my name, for all those who missed it, my name is Terika. Um, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and I've been natural for five years now. And I went natural, well, I transitioned it from, yeah, 2014. That's when I started. Yeah. No, 2015, sorry. <laughs> my name is Gabby. I'm from Florida as well, from Jacksonville. Um, I've been natural for five years, and how really I started, I started out transitioning, but I did like a big chop, and I just went on from there. Okay, so the first question I'm going to ask both, all of you is, what is it that, what's one thing that you love about being natural? <laughs> um, the fact that it is my own hair. <laughs> um... I don't know. I just like I, I wake up and then I look in the mirror. I'm just like, wow, look, look at my progress. My journey is definitely what I love. Yeah. I think my favorite thing about being natural is feeling like I'm fully authentic and I don't have to worry about putting a product in my hair like perm to get a certain look every month because I used to have to keep it routinely up and so now that I'm um completely natural I don't have any product other okay than moisturizing products I like that I like being able to um rock my real hair and not have to feel like I have to maintain it a certain way because with permed hair my roots would always get puffy and frizzy and especially living in Daytona in undergrad it was very humid Daytona Beach the, it's humid like every day so um, I like being natural because I don't have to feel like I have to keep up with a certain look. I, I can just wear my hair and I'm good. Yeah, I definitely understand that. Um, I think the main reason that one thing that I love about being natural is just the versatility of it. We can go from our Afro to puffs. We can wear our twist outs. We can get throw on a wig. Like it's several things that we can do with our hair and it can't be imitated. Like you can twist up any style and make it your own. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite part, which might seem a little weird, it's like something that people don't mention too often, but I love the fact that I rarely need like a bobby pin to hold my hair in place because of my mm -hmm. texture. I can like wrap it and tuck it and it stays in place. Mm -hmm. And I know that's something that a lot of people can do. So it's kind of nice that our hair can mold itself and like hold itself up. That's kind of nice though. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I agree. I think my favorite thing about being natural is that I really don't like people doing my hair because it's like people just, they're really rough and 
I just got tired of like heated products and all this stuff and I just really hate it. So I just like the fact of doing my own hair. And it's just, people say it's harder being natural, but really it's kind of easier because it's a less process when you think about it. No, let me know it's nine o'clock. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> okay yeah I definitely agree with you Gab like because I'm very I've always been very tender-headed so like when I used to be relaxed that used to be like my biggest headache when I was getting my <laughs> hair done so um, another question is what would be a top tip that you would give to any natural I think the top tip I'd give to a natural is to be patient with their hair in all stages because like when I'm impatient and I try to detangle it and I'm just like pulling the pick through or being rough with it, I have a lot more breakage and um, I could have reduced that if I just took my time with my hair with detangling. So um, for me, I think it's important to be patient and not rush through the detangling process because with the type of hair we have, it, is really curly and it'll tangle up if you're like just just breathing it'll tangle up so I think being <laughs> careful with it is good. I also agree with Tyree's patience 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 because whether you're locked or just starting from a big chop or just having natural hair and wanting to have the growth you have to be patient and and water your hair <laughs> like a plant and just make sure you take care of it the best the best that you can and it will grow <laughs> it will grow yeah um I think the top tip that I would give any natural is to manifest the growth growth that you want to see because oftentimes a lot of it is a mindset thing like I always say like if you don't manifest my hair is going to grow you're not going to love it as much you're not going to cherish it as much so that it can blossom um yeah so speak positive things over your hair not just putting products on and expecting it to just that's it like it's a mindset thing right yeah i think the biggest really top tip is basically keeping your hair moisturized is really the key to everything because like you guys said you know watering your hair just giving it food because everything needs food to grow. So you have to think of your hair as a plant. So that's really the main thing that'll get you everything because a lot of people say, oh, my hair is not growing like yours. And I'll be like, what are you putting in it? And they'll be like, nothing. I'm like, well, that's why it's not growing. You're not putting anything in it. So I think that's like major, the major top thing to me. Mm -hmm, I agree with that. Okay, so I also have, did you want to answer Alexis? No, I said I thought I unmuted myself, but I was just talking. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is, what was a difficult point in your natural hair journey? Because I know as a natural, whether we want to admit it or not, there was a natural, there was a difficult point. <laughs> well, when I started my locks, <laughs> occasionally um, washing my hair, they, they would pop off <laughs> because like when you first have your locks, they unravel sometimes when, when you're washing your hair, whether you're trying to be as gentle as possible you know, or if you are being rough, but that shouldn't be the case. But sometimes they would fall off and I would interlock them back in my hair. But yeah, that would be <laughs> the most difficult. It's funny that you say that because I actually have a friend. She, she said she had the same problem. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as she started her lock process, it was like her natural locks were just falling off. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think one of my struggles would have to be my hair was, I think I demonstrated my hair like two times from, I guess, um, I said like getting it done and like, trying to apply heat to my natural hair, which is mm -hmm. not a very smart thing to do, like constantly. And I would get damaged and then it would just break off. And I would, you can notice, you notice after a while the break off. So what I would do is just leave it alone and just let it just go around. And eventually it goes out on its own. So it's like, it's done at least twice. So I just, mm -hmm. it may be damaged, but it'll go back. So it's okay. 
Yeah, I think the challenge for me was one time um, I left my hair in a bun for a week and it got like matted really bad and I wasn't combing it out or detangling it. And so I had to like find some type of way to get out the matted parts. And I felt really bad that I left it alone that long, but I was so busy until I didn't have time. I thought I could just leave it up in um, these little twists. I had like four twists and then I had it in a tight bun and it was ruined. So I had to like, it was like two hours or something, just detangling each section to try to get it back to normal. So I wouldn't um, have any length loss and I was able to retain my length. So I was happy about that. I didn't have to break all my hair off or cut it out to get it to be detangled. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I think a difficult point in my natural hair journey was just learning how to manage tangles and getting through that awkward phase of first going natural. Um, I think the hardest thing for me was just like figuring out what styles I wanted to try because it was kind of hard at first. I was still getting to know the whole like my whole texture, like what products work for me. And yeah, that was pretty hard. Um, so yeah, that was my struggle. <laughs> so the next question is, what is something that you would tell someone who's thinking of going natural, but they're afraid to take that first step? I would definitely tell them research, research, research. Make sure that you know, you're making the right decision for yourself, if that's even what you're ready for. See your options. See if you want to get locks or just have, you know, natural afro going for you. Research on hairstyles, maintenance. Realistically, I was, I would ask them, um, what's your why? Like, what's your reason for wanting to go natural? And then, um, are you ready really only because this is a hands-on type of thing? It takes a lot of TLC, tender love, tender love and care. Um, but then again, when you're passionate about something, if you're passionate about your natural look, your curls, your fro, your kinky, curly, wavy, you're going to just do what it takes to, to make it flourish because it's something you're really passionate about. And I guess to be real, um, prepare your pockets at times. It depends on <laughs> what what um brand you use what line you use what's your methods of products all that stuff so going natural is not a cheap route and i know that's why some people don't do it um but there's ways to get around certain costs too i think the best advice of giving would be like to make sure to basically build up the person to make sure they have the confidence to actually go natural because some people go natural and then they go through the process and then they hate it you don't want to do the process and then hate yourself for it. Mm -hmm. So have the idea of you being okay with maybe, you know, you not having hair. So, so, so to some people, it's a big deal, but it's just, you just have to have that self-love and like just high self-esteem to even go through the process. So I think that's a big issue too. And then what she said, or Alexa said about the, the costs about going natural. A lot of people say, oh, it's expensive, but getting your hair done all the time is more expensive than actually being natural because you're spending like $500, $400 on your hair when you can just spend like most of like the highest expensive product of like any type of jar moisturizer will be like $8. So it may be expensive to some people, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I see where the cost could come mm -hmm. in. Like, it might be expensive for someone if they're trying this product and it's not working and it's trying this one, it's not working. So that's why I think it's good to first do the research to see for your hair type, um, knowing what your hair is like and kind of like getting a feel for the best products that would work for moisture retention and then just start there. And then if that product doesn't work, you can mix it with other stuff just to use it up so you're not feeling like you're wasting money until it's all gone. And so I think that would be helpful. You know, I had some really good answers. So something that I would tell someone who's thinking of going natural is don't be afraid to embrace yourself. Like you're, it's, it's gonna be an awkward process. Um, and I know that's easier said than done. Like when you first start out, if you, like Gabby said, if you don't have that self-esteem, 
yeah, it's going to be a push. So make sure you're at that place where you're like, you know what, if I do this big chop, I'll be okay because I'm mentally prepared for that process. Um, I would also say, make sure that you look into the products that you're using. Don't just go by, go by YouTube videos and use every product that you see on YouTube. Like make sure you try it. If it doesn't work, move on to something else that you think might work. And you just have to keep, it's a learning process. Like even as a five year natural, you're still learning. So I would say, just don't be afraid to embrace your own hair. And it's a learning process. You'll learn over time. Yeah, one thing I have to add is there's such thing as returns. So if that product don't work, take it back. Get yeah, your exactly. money back. Get That's why I like Walmart. <laughs> You can go to Walmart, try something out, and if it's just not what you thought it was going to be, you can save some money. Yeah, just and get, get that receipt and work. take it right back. <laughs> right. I'm going to go ahead and answer Alexa's question. She said, do you yeah. think it's awkward because of society? And I was just thinking the same thing. I was like, well, maybe society makes us feel like we have to feel awkward because, you know, certain people don't accept natural hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that if someone wants to go into what others believe about themselves, instead of digging in and defining things for yourself and say, this isn't awkward because this is my hair. I was born with this and embracing that, like other people embrace other things about themselves mm -hmm. and move along with it. And it can be even a struggle with like embracing body types, but I feel like body types and hair, they're all physical and they're all a part of you and embracing that that's when it becomes less awkward. Yeah, and I'm gonna take this to another level. The way I look at it is that God put this hair on our, our head for a reason. Like he wouldn't give us something that we can't handle or he wouldn't put it on our head for no purpose. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like we have this hair, so why not embrace it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason why it's awkward in most cases is because society always has this, already has this thought in their head of what's actually normal and what's actually not. Mm -hmm. So they're, un they're not used to what's actually natural from like their perspective. Like for example, when I say I have an interview, I would style my hair a certain way because I know if I do, even though my hair is not being pretty, having big hair is really intimidating to most people. So sometimes I just put my hair in a ponytail because for some people they just, they're just not used to it. But in this world, you're not supposed to be used to anything. So everything is different. Yeah, and I also want to piggyback off what you're saying, Gab, because like, as far as like when I'm in school, sometimes I kind of have to like hide, like not hide it, but like kind of tone it down a little bit so that I don't make people around me feel uncomfortable. And it's just mm -hmm. like, why can't I just be me? <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's always this. Let me try to make sure I'm fitting in but still try to be authentic it's like trying to find a balance between what's acceptable right what's crazy oh, <laughs> I was Go gonna ahead. say what's crazy to me is that so I have a daughter she's six and um curls is normal to her I will say I was raised where my dad had curly hair my mom had more of a kinky texture she didn't really have like curls so mm -hmm. Um, my hair stayed natural for like maybe up to maybe eight or nine years old. And then I converted back to being natural not that long after. I've been <laughs> natural for almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years next year. But um, so I think the biggest thing that I've noticed is this is normal to my daughter having big, curly, fluffy hair. That's normal. But now as we're talking, I just realized I tie her hair down a lot because in preschool and then now she's in grade school, the teachers and we can, I'm sure you can assume what type of te teachers I'm talking about. Yeah. Teachers mm -hmm. have had a thing of just like putting their hands in her hair. I would pick her up and her hair is just not how I dropped her off. And her hair is pretty, is a really great texture. It's very manageable. So it shouldn't have got messed up how it was so I end up tying her hair down doing twists in her ponytails little um buns and bantu knots and keeping it tied down 
And to this point now, she doesn't even like her hair out in her face just because she can't see. But now yeah. it's, I'm so used to having it tied down when it's out and fluffy. She's like, huh, this is kind of odd. So I, now I'm like, I feel bad because <laughs> she was totally for it from the womb, embracing it, loved it. We tie it down to make everybody else feel comfortable or to avoid yeah. touched and stuff. Right. Yeah, I can agree to that. Like, especially when I first went natural, people would just try to touch my hair and, oh, wow. Like they, they saw me permed first. And then now everyone's like trying to see what it feels like. Oh, I wonder what your hair feels like. And it's just like space. Like, come on, that's, that's like <laughs> not fair that you're all in my bubble and I didn't allow you to like, at least ask first. Don't just stick your hand up in my head. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> it's funny because um, for me, when I went natural, it's like, I just always wear my hair out because to be honest, I didn't really care. I didn't really care what nobody else thought when I thought about it. It's just like, I used to hate having my hair like in a ponytail or like, oh, I just wanted it out like all the time. But it's like now, I don't know. Now I kind of let it tie down because it's because people, I don't know why people, they just, I noticed that people really see me different now. Like, I don't know if they're intimidating or if I just scare them because what's natural is, not normalized like what was said so it's like anything that's real about somebody people are scared of, scared like to be near you because i guess they can't measure up to you so mm. I, like some people even some most females and most guys usually both they feel that i guess they feel the same way yeah so to piggyback off of that do you feel like do y'all feel like when you wear your hair out versus when it's tied down, do you feel like there's a different reaction? Like, yes, most definitely. Like when I went out the other day- And can you day, talk about a time when it's happened? <laughs> yes, yes, I can think of one. It was actually, I was actually out with my friend one time and this guy was like, oh my gosh, your hair looks so soft. And it was out, like I picked it out, I like it being full sometimes I want to pull it back but most times I want to wear it out today I just have it up but I like it full so this guy who was just like looking at me and then he was trying to be flirty and then he tries to touch my hair and I was just like mm. and even as I'm leaning my head like this he's still reaching I'm like you can't see me moving so <laughs> <laughs> people do things just because Maybe they want to feel closer. Maybe they just want to see like, oh, this is different. I wonder what it feels like. But it's just like respecting someone's space. That's my space. I don't know you. Don't do that. Yeah. So, even like when having different styles, people react in a different way. Because mm -hmm. yeah, one that's time true. where I was at work, I just had my hair like in a ponytail. But then the next day I had it like in a high puff, you know, like I pick it out and I twist it. So my hair looks like a palm tree. And then one of the customers was like, oh, yeah, I seen you yesterday. It was like, your hair was kind of wild. In my mind, I was like, wild? Mm. And mm -hmm. I was just like, it's literally the same thing. It's just in a different position. So I was just like, that's like, like I said before, having big hair, having it out really imitates people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see what lines go through. They're very imitating because of the big hair. So I have a personal experience um, at one of my jobs. My boss, um, she, um, so one day I came to work and you know how when you first start out, you know, you kind of tone it down or whatever. So when I first started out the, at the job, um, I had my hair in a ponytail and she was like, give me all kind of compliments. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm slaying. So... <laughs> So she was giving me all kind of compliments. She was like, okay, I like your hair. It's nice. So the next day I was like, okay, maybe I should, you know, bring it all out, show them the real me. <laughs> so I wore my fro to work and she was like, what did you do to your hair? She was like, um, what products? Like I can recommend some products that you can use. I'm like, excuse oh. me? Oh, yeah. She was like, oh, my um, son has the same texture as you. You can use this product you use to get your twist out a little more polished. Like, yeah, literally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, she was mixed. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so when I tell y'all, I was just like, she tried it. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's so I like, not nice. almost like, quit that day. <laughs> I haven't had an Afro phase, but I can speak on um, a time when my hair was touched unwantedly. Um, I was in high school and it was around the time that I did have my perm hair. And this girl that I did kind of grow up with from elementary, middle, and high always thought my hair wasn't real because it just looked silky smooth. And one of the days in high school, she decided to rake my scalp and see if I had tracks. Because she would ask me multiple times, oh, is your hair real or whatever? And like, it felt good because it just gave me a flashback on how my hair and and but for a split second I was like I had to come back to reality and turn <laughs> around and be like who in the world and it was her I was like oh I was like don't touch my hair I was like oh you trying to see if it's real yeah you ain't feeling no tracks right like you thought so <laughs> that's my experience oh my gosh <laughs> I actually have a question like um how do you feel like about like like the authentic like natural state of natural hair because since i'm 4c um like say i wash my hair my sh- our is very bad so my hair will really go to and then it'll appear out and people are like did you cut your hair i'm just like mm-hmm. yeah like, our shrinkage like, is real <laughs> so i literally blow out blow out my hair all the time because mm-hmm. i feel like Sometimes I feel like I'm only prettier that way. But it's like sometimes I really just want to wear my hair in an afro. But I feel like somebody's going to say something to me. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, why don't you do your hair? And I'll just be like. I mean, on. just like you said, when you were younger and you would wear your hair out and you really didn't care about what anybody else thought, got to keep that same attitude, keep that same energy. Honestly, I feel like When I'm having a good hair day, or in my opinion, I'm just feeling myself, can't nobody touch my confidence. That that could also be because I'm a Leo, and I think (laughs) I'm that chick, because I am, but... Yeah, y'all are very confident. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, you had that confidence before, keep that same energy. Can't nobody be you, like you, ever. And they're just mad because they want your your hair, girl. It don't matter how Mm -hmm. short or long how kinky or curly our hair is. It's so beautiful. The textures that we have are so amazing. It's so versatile. It does so much. Um, it, it, I think it's I think it's like um, overwhelming to people because it is so versatile. And it's like, just how? It's like magical to them. Like, how can you do all of these styles? Like we did the four hairstyles, um, the four different oh, yeah, looks. The four different looks. So, and people were like, Oh, you switched it up, switched it up. Oh, this is regular. This is regular, regular. You get Beyonce today. You'll get Taraji tomorrow. You know, right, you know there you go. Yeah. Beyonce the next day. <laughs> right. Yeah, but um, to address that also, Gab, like based off, I want to go base it on the movie Napoli Ever After. You remember how she did that big chop and it was like, it's also the way that you wear it. If you wear it, like she said, with confidence, they don't have no choice but to accept that because it's like, oh, she knows she can stuff, you know, the jump. So she's rocking it like she's she's owning it. Like, mm-hmm. so you just gotta own it. I'm gonna wear my hair like that one day. Next time I'm gonna wash my hair. Yeah. I'm, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna let my hair jacket, but I don't really care. And then <laughs> post it on Instagram and we're gonna shower you with so much love. Yes. <laughs> I have to point out really quickly that having the thickness in winter is like natural earmuffs. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Keep your ears warm. It it is. To a beanie. <laughs> right, it does. Okay, so the next um natural hair question that I had was what inspired you to go natural? I guess I'll go ahead. Oh, were you going to go, Shannara? I was just asking who who wanted to go. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So what inspired me to go natural is just 
not wanting to have to deal with two textures anymore. I wanted to try to grow my hair out. And for um, seven months, I was like transitioning it from permed to natural. And so I just felt like to be completely authentic, to be able to have my hair the way it's meant to be, I would just feel happiest that way. So that's one reason I was inspired. I was also inspired by a lot of um, women and girls going natural on YouTube, talking about their transitioning journey and um, how they were able to fully embrace their curls and seeing all the awesome styles they could do with their hair made me want to. And I also felt like at that time to be like, I was like in a state where I just wanted to be fully me. And I was um, finishing my first year of undergrad. So that summer I just decided it's time to go into a new stage of my life. And it was a really good decision. I wouldn't go back. My transition, it was my mom and I, we were both, we were both still perm and we just, we, we would see people with locks and natural curly hair and we would be like, we want our hair to grow. Like our hair was just at a stuck length. Mine was like right here, right above my shoulders for years with that perm. And I just remember my mom saying, Shannara, it was, I was going to my freshman year of high school and my mom was like, Shannara, go on YouTube and start looking up some natural hairstyles. So I was like, I don't want an afro. <laughs> so I ended up coming across locks along with my mom and we just did a ton of research on locks and we see people looking like Rapunzel. And like, we, we were just amazed. And ever since then, we, we started to transition. I want to say for what really influenced me, I want to say my mom uh, really influenced me to like go natural. And I don't want to say I was tricked, but it's like I just got tired of doing like my hair and tired of getting burned at the nail salon with flat irons. So I was like, okay, um, I don't want to do my hair no more. And I don't want to get like get perms anymore. Cause like it's like the age where your mom starts doing your hair. So I was like, I don't have no one to do my hair no more. So I just, you know, I decided to, I already went a long time without my perm, so my hair was already transitioning on itself, so I was like, might as well just continue. And it was kind of hard to deal with, because my, half of my hair was curly, half of my hair was straight, and then when I was at the nail salon, get my hair done, some type of way, it was like damaged, I guess I wasn't keeping up with it, but it was like, it was kind of hard, because the transitioning, so what I decided to do was just like, just, just cut it off. And I was really happy. Like, I was ready for it. Like, he was like, did you cry? I'm like, no, because I was over it because I couldn't do my hair. So I'm kind of glad I did. For me, I went natural. Um, it was the weirdest experience. I never thought about it prior to. I went to the hair salon with one of my friends at the time. I was, I think I was 15. And... Um, I usually would get a relaxer and for some reason she would always just get like a regular silk press on her natural hair and it always came out bomb and it was crazy because it looked just like when I got the relaxer so I was like what am I going through all this stuff for and she getting the same results um but so I decided to just that day I was like no nah, just like wash it and press it and my stylist was like girl we gonna do that and I was like Shh, we gonna do that today and then that was the day so I was just like I don't know, I want to switch it up. And then I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? What is being natural? And then we went from there and Googled and YouTubed and bought all types of products that were not needed, but that's how you always start, so. Okay, so what inspired me to go natural, like Gabby said, I was also kind of tricked. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But my mom, um, she inspired me to go natural because she she's been natural since before 2014. So she already had her natural curls and everything, but she switched to the relaxer, then got a, another, um, went natural again. So that's why I would say I was tricked. <laughs> and then I had a friend um, who also had natural hair. So just seeing her hair and how she embraced it, it just inspired me to take that step and actually chop my ends off to start my journey. 
So another question is, what is your favorite, like, go-to product? Like, if you were stuck on an island, what's one product that you have to have? <laughs> I'm going to go get it so I can show y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I should go get some product. I'm going to talk about Oh, mine. I should have got mine. She is can too. Really? I love Canel. <laughs> can too, yes. Uh, I see like the like the olive oil, the um pudding in the jar. Oh, the olive yeah. oil. That's that's yeah, what I like that. started out with. Mm-hmm. I think I can slowly transition <laughs> over got to the product. Let's see it. Let's see it. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Okay, I, I hope I'm saying this correctly. My sister's next to me. How do you say this? <laughs> Lustrous Silk. Lustrous Silk. You get this at the black hair store. This is what I've used as my moisturizer. It is $6.49, but don't worry about the price. It's very low, but that's not why this is everything. This, first of all, it smells so good. Um, there's no sulfate in it because I'm allergic to anything with salt <laughs> Mm-hmm. This is like a how would you describe it? Um, um it reminds me of a gel, but it doesn't have that sticky. Um, okay. It doesn't have that sticky flaky. You know. She said it reminds her of a gel, but not the sticky flaky, mm-hmm. flaky okay. effects. It's mm-hmm. very loose, like um it's very loose like a like a like a liquid, so it's not a moisturizer, like a cream, it's like, a cream, yeah. like a liquid cream. I would pour it in my hand to show y'all, but it's too good to waste. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but I have had this for two years now. A little bit goes a long way. You don't need a lot. And then I'm going to um, actually retwist my hair tonight before bed and just respraying the sections of my hair. It almost reactivates like the product, so I don't have to add any more. Um, mm-hmm. And it's basically, it's a curl activator moisturizer so it just is going to revitalize and reactivate your curls naturally and it's enriched with argan oil mm-hmm. so it's made for curls and wave if you want a little motion in your ocean <laughs> <laughs> have to give that one a shot my it's favorite is girl. um cantu as well i like the one that comes in the cylinder container it's like this big and it has they changed the top it used to be orange but it's white now and I love that it smells like coconuts and like a tropical island. And it feels so good on my hair. Like it smooths in best compared to other things for like something for styling, but for like hydration, I really like this product called cholesterol. And it just works so good for holding in moisture when I deep condition with it and I leave it in my hair. I don't rinse it out. I leave it as a leave in and it works really good for helping my hair stay hydrated. Okay. So my go-to product would have to be Miel Organics. And I just got hooked onto that like this year. Like I love the way the product smell. Um, it's also, it also doesn't, it's the, it doesn't cost that much. Like they have little deals every couple of months. So I catch those good deals. <laughs> and um, I also love the way my twist outs come out with their twist out um, pudding. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that's my favorite um, product. So what is one word that y'all would use to describe your journey? And feel free to elaborate on it. It's exciting. Cause like yeah. from the beginning, I was just like, wow, look at my hair now. Like when I first cut it all off in that day was, I was just like feeling relieved and happy that I didn't have to worry about the two textures and so I say it's exciting because there's so many styles that you can do with my hair. And there's so many that I haven't done yet that I want to try, like the butterfly locks. I want to try that protective style. And if I get tired of that, I can do a sew-in and I can just straighten my hair or curl it. So I just think it's so exciting, all the styles I can do. Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. say... I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you can go, you can go. Okay, okay. I would say success because I'm finally natural I'm finally back to where like how my hair was when I was born and just going through the journey in the stages of my hair which I will be posting on my Instagram my my journey um by years 2017 to 2020 and it's just 
amazing to finally see my hair like getting down my back because it's like never been that long so it's definitely and I feel so empowered when I'm walking around you know Walmart or anywhere at the mall and I see someone else with locks and they'll come up to you and start talking about natural hair and everything and it's like you have that connection and it's it's so weird (laughs) not weird in a bad way but it's just like amazing it's like you it's like you have like um some sort of hair bond (laughs) with that other person Yeah, I will also say the process too, like just watching, like you seem like your progress, like when you're actually seeing like your growth, it's it's kind of very exciting. It's like, like, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be like five more years. I hear come jump on back. I'm like, just wait on it. <laughs> it yeah, it's just really exciting. Um, another I would say a word to describe my journey would be inspiring. Like you don't realize it, like just being natural every day and just being confident in that. And just, you would be surprised who's actually watching you. Like they're watching you go through your, their journey and that's inspiring them to finally take that step to go into that journey. Like literally me and Gabby were walking down the street one day and we were just walking around, you know, we do that. And this um, random lady, she was like, y'all go ahead, show these young mm-hmm. girls to rock their they natural hair. I was like, okay, because you, you don't think about it every day, but we all are inspiring people in our own way every day. So yeah, next question, did you transition first or did you just big chop and how did you feel after? Mm. Well, I would say, oh, go ahead, Gabby. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, my same, my same story correlates. Transition first. I didn't take care of it. Like I wasn't. I guess I wasn't moisturizing enough, but I didn't know what to do, so I was transitioning. And like I said, half my hair was curly, half of it was straight. And it was like I didn't know my straight ends were supposed were going to fall out. Nobody told me that. Mm. But um, it was like. I think it was like after like a couple, maybe like two months, maybe like, no, it was like a couple months, but it was like, when it got like past my birthday, it's like, at this point, I didn't know what to do because I would style my hair, like, you know, natural styles, like I try to curl it up, but it wouldn't stay because of the, the ends, which is straight. So I just, I do, I went to like a natural hairstylist and she cut off my hair for me. And I mean, you know, it wasn't sad because like when you're prepared for it, like you're you know, like, you know, you wanted to happen. So I was really happy that it cut off. And then after that, she gave me like little Marion breaks. So I was kind of happy. And then, you know, but it's kind of good. Like, because I know a lot of my friends, they want to start over and I tell them that they should. It doesn't matter about the beginning process because, you know, your hair is going to grow really fast when you think about it. Because I came back to her shop and she see my hair and she didn't realize that she cut my hair. <laughs> well, I transitioned. Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I transitioned out completely, which I I I haven't been able to hear too many people say that. I think that's very rare. Um, so I did that. Um So seven years in of being natural, um, I decided to dye my entire head honey blonde and I was loving it. And, but I will say if you guys are around kids or you know kids or you have kids, kids are very honest. And my daughter at the time told me that my hair was so cute, but it's the same color as my skin. And I said, okay, (laughs) okay. So then I was like, I'm gonna get back. Before I decided to like even take that step, I noticed the bleach made my curls start to look like ramen noodles. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, we transitioned perfectly fine. This is on you. I did this, you know, with the bleach. So then I decided to cut it all off and I cut it all off, cut it all. First, I was going to cut the color, but I said, I just do it all. And then um, it came back in 10 months. And that was from like massaging my scalp like a crazy person I was just stimulating my hair follicles I was drinking water I was doing any and everything I could in the most natural way of just like treating it better and I probably won't ever dye it again you can just get wigs and stuff and be fun 
or hair yeah. wax. Get biotin or anything? No, I will say um, I took my, I was still on my prenatals like a few years after I had my daughter. I think that plays a part too. And then genetics, my family's hair grows really fast. So I think that's also a big part that takes in it. Cause people say, well, 10 months and it was at its regular length again. How did you do that? Yeah. You know I, mean? I was like, no. <laughs> Genetics. And I was still on my prenatals. So, cause you can still take them forever. Which I don't know why you can still do that, but you can. <laughs> yeah, dye is kind of like an enemy when it comes to hair. I mean, it looks really cute, but it just, it doesn't play along with it. It doesn't like any hair to be honest. Because you, you dye, you have to keep it like moisturized and stuff like that. And I know I would not be able to take care of it because I would, I don't even moisturize my hair every day. I try to, but mm -hmm. no, I really don't do it how I should. That's real. <laughs> I guess when I was um, like in high school, I just, I wanted to do dye because I was like, you know, everybody does it. So I got like the spray on can, like spray on dye. And I was mm -hmm. do that to my hair. <laughs> but now they have like the new thing where they have the color wax it's like um comes in a jar you just and then it washes out and I was like I wish they would have been to that back then I might try it depends because <laughs> a lot of naturals use it so I, I guess it must be safe right. I, hope so. I would say transition because you know as I stated before I was perm along with my mom and we we just we decided to go ahead and get our locks done. It was expensive at the start, and that's why we were so focused on YouTube videos to learn um, how to retighten our locks. And I, I do it myself. I just retightened my locks last week, Friday, I think it was. I'll just sit there, watch some movies, and, and just get it done. Lexis, she had a question. I, th I saw the word blue. <laughs> go ahead, what was your question? No, I was telling Gabby that um, the blue and purple hair wax was my favorite. Yeah, I yes. want to try it. It looks really it. pretty. And yeah, it comes it's cute. <laughs> with just warm water. It comes really? right on. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm going to try it. That's um, awesome. <laughs> I've been wanting to try it too. It's thick. It's with, made with beeswax. So um. try, to, try to, you know, like almost like a detangling kind of vibe. Just try to spread it through because it is okay. thick. Mm hmm would you suggest using it on wet hair? Because I'm thinking maybe if you do it, it might be easier to... I did it on wet hair and did like a wash and go. I've seen some people even do like, say they freshly wash and they did a twist out. And so like, in while you would do like a, your products before you do the twist, that's when you rub in the color and then twist oh, it. Okay. When it comes out and it's all dry, it's all cute. So yeah, I would apply it with wet hair. I think on dry, you might, you might get some breakage or something because it's thick. <laughs> <laughs> some YouTube videos I was just looking into getting the wax on women with locks doing it and they they ended up rinsing it out and their hair is you know back to their normal color but I was really nervous on put pressing too hard and then it gets embedded in my locks and then I have like an undertone of the wax that's my biggest fear otherwise I would I would have bought that wax yesterday <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I would, I would still really love to try because I want to dye my hair without, you know, the permanent damage or experiment with colors. And definitely the purple and blue always been my favorite. I actually ended up dyeing my hair. Therese helped me <laughs> back in like, I don't, I don't know, 2014, I think it was. When like I middle that. school. I think you're like in middle school then. And yeah. I was in high school. <laughs> I was like, in, I was in seventh grade. And my mom, she was like, you're not dying your whole head. So I was like, all right, I made a, I made a deal with her. I was like, can I do the underneath? She was like, okay. So Tyrese and I, we got in the laundry room sink. <laughs> we went to town. <laughs> it was so fun. Yeah, I think the uh, wax will be good in here. Because for some reason, dye, when it comes to like locks, it stays, dye stays in locks like for a really long time. Like you really can have it in for like years. And the color will still be there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there was a question. I think let's have a question in chat about the, the winter process, like with natural oh, yeah. hair. Yeah, the change. Do y'all change your products um, based on like the weather? 
Um, I wouldn't say I change the products. I'm more like I use oil more because my hair is not like winter. It's not like mm. the cold weather because it gets dry. And I feel it. So what I do, I wear a wig during the winter months, and I keep it in. I keep it on for like, for like four, five months. out the winter season is. I keep it as long as possible. And then once like summer comes out, I just take it off. And then my hair grows like a lot from being under that wig for a long time. Right, because you're not touching it at all. You're yeah, it. less less manipulation. Yeah, I keep a lot of protective styles Good. and moisturizer. I see my hair grow freaking. like four inches mm-hmm. <laughs> from just being a, I had the wig on for like five months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have our last. To, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'll go ahead. Sorry. That I don't switch products. I keep the same stuff, but I try to use more oil, like Gabby does. And I like doing protective styles, like wearing wigs or um, crochet braids or whatever, just so I'm not touching my hair and the cold isn't getting to it. Because when snow gets on hair, I get afraid that it's gonna like freeze it and cause it to be um, weaker and more damage can accumulate. So I just leave it alone and tuck it away. Yeah. Right. It smells where you're at, Tyrese. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you definitely. Yeah, it's like that. Cleveland Gap. <laughs> it's snow for me. So, what's a common misconception of being natural that you would want to address? <laughs> Let me tell y'all. <laughs> Ooh, when I was telling my friends in high school, I'm getting lots. I'm getting lots. They all had a misconception of not you know, washing your hair. So they asked me, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get locks. I'm like, and then the girl, she was like, well, do you wash your hair? I'm like, do you wash yours? It's hair. (laughs) Like, (laughs) yes, yes. Because I think, because I think when, when people mention dreadlocks or locks, they, they are used to seeing people with the free form where it's matted down and stuck together. They're not used to seeing people who actually maintain and keep up their hair um looking good so I mean I just think as far as society goes again as we discussed earlier people not that we have to force force people to be aware you know that we can't take care of our hair but it should be known that we are taking care of ourselves and you know we're not letting go (laughs) Mm -hmm. and it's like you know as people of color we don't really have to wash our hair all the time so it's like with dreads you really you know, you really, just, you really have to just for all your, you just focus on your scalp. That's the most yeah. important thing because your, your hair grows from your head, mm-hmm. not more so the ends. I mean, right. you take care of your ends, but it's all about your scalp. Right. So yeah, that's true. You don't really have to wash your hair. I wash my hair once a month, sometimes two. It depends on whether I feel like it or not. <laughs> I wash my hair weekly. If I'm not, you know, going anywhere, then I'll go two weeks. But I was like, I wouldn't say I'm nose blind, nose blind, but I can't really smell, smell my hair. So I'm just like, oh, let me smell it. <laughs> let me wash it. So, yeah, <laughs> I make sure I wash it. Yeah, because you exercise since you work out, you have to make it more often. Yeah. I don't I can't think of any misconceptions right now, but I think a misconception I had was it was very hard to maintain in that it was, it was like almost impossible to deal with. And I don't think that that's true. I think with the right products that help with detangling and knowing how to manage this hair type or any hair type that someone may have, knowing how to manage it is important. And um, so I think that's a misconception I don't have anymore. It's all about like having a good routine that works for you. Mm-hmm. I agree. I don't know if it's just me, but a common misconception that I would run into, I don't know if this applies like before I went natural, is just the perception that our hair doesn't grow. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, yeah. Ever since (laughs) I've gone through my natural hair journey, it's taught me that our hair is not, it's not meant to stay stunted. It, It has the potential to grow beyond even what we can see so yeah I would definitely speak on that Terika um (laughs) middle school man them kids were really brutal but some dude had the nerve to say um 
that my hair hasn't grown since such and such. And yeah. I'm just thinking like, who are you to talk about my hair? First of all, I mean, I really hate to put genders out, but like worry about yourself. You know, I have my life. I'm taking care of myself. I know what's going on in my life. And, you know, that was around the time that I was having the perm, which I did see growth. <laughs> my hair was growing, but just growing slow. And I remember in the elementary school, and I would look at the other girls in the classroom and I'm like, man, I wish my hair would grow down my back like that. Like they would cut their hair and the next month they'll grow like 10 times longer. I'm like, when will my hair get that long? So now having these locks, I can say that. <laughs> I am so happy. I am so, so look, look y'all, look at it. <laughs> yes, Lynn. No growth wear because I thought somebody who didn't have gross hair something. <laughs> right. Because I was getting out to be washing my hair and I turned one day and I was like, <laughs> like journey, journey, journey. It, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, yeah, like, some people are complete. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Gabby. I'm sorry. You can go ahead. I was saying that a misconception is people think hair can't grow, but it's not that it's not growing. It's that it's breaking off. So mm -hmm. the length retention isn't there. It's just like you get a half an inch and it breaks off again from being dry or brittle or maybe too much combing or mm -hmm. who knows what's going on. But I think when the ends are strong with protein treatment and it's moisturized often, then you can retain that length. And with you, Shannara, having locks, your hair isn't breaking off. It's stuck in the interlocking um, you know, it's all stuck in there. It's not coming out. So your hair will probably, it might get longer than mine and we'll see. <laughs> now I will speak on that. I do have some breakage because when I come out the shower and I'm doing my moisturizing routine with the shade moisture um, and I'm just like, you know, I'm moisturizing the scalp and getting the ends and all my hair. Um, There will be some strands like on my fingers so I do have, you know, breakage, but I think that's just, you know, the, the friction of washing my hair and then the dead hair is falling off. I don't know. Yeah. I, I got breakage. <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me of another misconception. I think that a lot of people have, especially when they're first coming into going natural, they often think that one texture is better than another. Mm. And I think we definitely need to address that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think all textures are beautiful. Mm -hmm. so. that's what yeah. I was gonna say a lot of people um tend to ask I, I hate to bring like skin color into it but yeah. um a lot of people would always ask like oh are you mixed this and that mm -hmm. because my hair my hair is really thick and I know people with um that are mixed with just black and white and they have a more of a thinner texture um but my daughter who is chocolate she's a chocolate little queen she <laughs> has silky silk hair so what the mixed girls would have mm -hmm. quote unquote yeah my chocolate baby has that so now are you gonna ask is she they don't even they don't bother to ask they just go oh she got that good hair what's good hair right. Right. My sis with the dress got good hair. My sis with the blow got good hair. With the with the right. hair wrap, with the twist. <laughs> we all got good hair. So what you know, what does that mean? And you know, it's kind of funny too. Uh, if you look at maybe your siblings, your aunts, other women around you, even the men, we all have different textures and we kind of we all have the same DNA and blood. Right. So it's like again, so versatile. We have so many different things, and they tend to think only certain people have good hair or better texture. Yeah. And my chocolate baby got the most silkiest hair in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she's black. She's black, right. black. <laughs> I think uh, another misconception is like on how people, they try to compare other races as composed to hair. Like you see like maybe a Caucasian person, like they're like, oh, I want my hair to be that long. And it's like, our hair grows differently. We have curl patterns. So our hair is going to be long, but it's just going to be curly. Because when I was younger, I used to always get, into, I used to always get like all the time, your hair is pretty long for a black girl. I'm just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear that. What does that mean? Like your daughter, she's probably going to get that a lot. 
growing up in school because everything's just some mystery. It's not really mystery. It's, it's just, we put all these chemicals and stuff for our hair. You know, we didn't really know what it's doing. It just makes the growth like grow slow. And then it's like, we're not in our, like, I want to say ecological niche. Because you see some people in Africa, their hair is like all the way down to their back and all this stuff like that. Because they're where they're meant to be in the environment that allows their hair to grow very long. They have the resources around them. And we don't really have that like much. Like the best hair products that work on my hair are from, are from Europe. Because Europe, Europeans actually study our hair. So they, to be honest, they make the best hair products to me. Mm. And we're over there. Well, that's a great we're point, everywhere. Deb. So, of course, they got it because mm. our people are everywhere. Yeah. Right, he's just over here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to thank everybody for joining our second natural hair discussion, um, embracing your natural. I love all my speakers. Thank y'all for joining. Um, thank you for so having me. No problem. One last question. Are there any other questions before we end our discussion? Because I don't want to leave anybody. Well, no. Okay. So thank y'all for having the natural hair discussion. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you. This was awesome. awesome. Can't wait to see. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait to see you guys next week on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. Bye, y'all.